One of the characteristics that's really interesting that we use to help us identify Cooper's hawks from sharp shin is the length of this outer tail feather compared to the length of the longest central tail feather. And you can see that there's quite a bit of difference there. Mm. And that's one of the critical differences between Cooper's hawks and the very similar sharp shinned hawks. guy has, last time he could see anything, he was in a small, quiet, dark place with only a few people around him. And now he's faced with quite a different situation and he's a little bit excitable. Uh, and not at all happy with me. You can see the hackles raised on the back of the head and his vocalizations, he's really not very happy. I'm going to try and show you a little bit about his plumage and his shape. He's got relatively short, rounded wings compared to the length of his tail. This is a uh, physical um, shape that enables him to fly through uh, wooded areas and make quick turns. That long tail acts as a nice rudder, and he can really make a quick turn with that. His short, relatively rounded wings enable him to put on bursts of speed, chasing another bird. Uh, he can just really accelerate very quickly. Um, this is a juvenile bird, which means he was hatched sometime this spring, or early, probably this spring, and started flying on his own sometime early in the summer. And probably by August, he was completely on his own and no longer getting any parental care at all. So these guys have a very tough time making it through their first winter. Uh, somewhere between 50% and 70% die in their first year of life because they can't figure out how to stay safe from all the hazards people put out there for them and also how to get enough meals to keep their nutrition level up and avoid disease or starvation. Okay, sweetie. All right. Calm down. Uh, some of you may be close enough to see that this band has a little projection on one side of it. This is called a lock-on band. The larger raptors have strong enough beaks that they can tweak bands off unless the bands are made this way. So the bigger ones get these lock-on bands with the tab that gets folded over and crimped really tight, and then they can't take them off. The plumage that tells me that this is a juvenile bird, and I'm not going to hold him much longer, it's the streaked, brown streaks on the breast against the white background, and the back is really brown. On an adult bird, the breast would be a reddish-brown color with fine white bars going across horizontally, and the back would be a blue-gray color. And that top of the head would be pl very black, looking like a cap on the top of its head. Um, the eyes gradually change from this kind of pale yellow color that you see on this bird, and then over a number of years become orange and then eventually red. The rate at which those eyes change is variable depending on the nutrition, uh, the particular things the bird is eating and how much nutrition he's getting and individual uh, characteristics of the bird itself. So you can't really age the bird by the eye color. We catch somewhere usually between 500 and our highest year ever was 1,000. Cooper's hawks in one year. We normally count somewhere around 1,500 to 3,000. Okay, this guy's going. This is enough. This is long enough. All right. Zoom out if you can.